I am the king of spreadsheets. The economy, very important to us here on the channel. Welcome back to the Gimes Gamers. Industrialists following the channel very closely because they know we've been following the economy since the very beginning. Uh, something I noticed on the last Calling All Devs where Disco was interviewing Jake Mule, who's a technical director for the economy directly or as an armchair warrior, as we say, very interested in spreadsheets. Shedding a little light as to another variable. So far, we know through the Tony Z conference that we watch live on stream that Tony Z is going to have one of the uh, variables in this algorithm that will dictate valuation to us as a trader, as an entrepreneur within the game, is going to be the volume. Well, that that's kind of, you know, that's something that we could all, have, you know, guessed uh, on our own for industrialists out there. But here's another interesting factor that Jake's going to shed a little light on. Let's watch here, and then I'll add a little commentary afterwards. Also, sneak peek of a new uh screen that was leaked here on reddit so we'll talk about that as well but let's watch jake first and see what he has to say i can talk to you about how uh, what kind of things go into the price of the ships and what the, goes into the economy behind them where okay. players will be to buy these ships so when when we look at the ships one of the things that we're looking at right now is not necessarily the the uec or the dollars to earn it but we're trying to figure out the time to earn it um so we look at items in such a way that we, we don't say like, oh, it's a certain amount of UEC or, or a certain amount of this or that. We, we look at and say, oh, it should be three hours to earn this thing or it should be, you know, one hour of effort. And, and of course, if you're a better or a worse player, that effort will be, you know, or that amount of time that you'll spend will be more or less, right? You can't just sit around and log into the game and, and do the wave emote for hours on end and still make the money required to earn, you know, whatever item you're looking for. So as you see there, Jake, we could we could we could misconstrue to actually what he's saying in the fact that um, time is like the only importance as a game developer. These people want to make sure that it takes a certain amount of time to get to these ships. But what I think he's actually saying is that he wants to have time as a variable in this algorithm. So they want to constitute like valuation on. I think not only just ship costs, but certain particular types of minerals or parts or pieces or items or assets within the game to have a, a certain kind of time factor built into this algorithm. So now we know it's going to be volume and now we know it's going to be time. I think that's exactly what Jake was trying to get across to people there. I don't think he did it exactly uh, as poignantly as he could, but I'm pretty sure that what they're what they're going to figure out in this algorithm is that they're, they're going to actually plug in both volume and time as to what they think is going to be like a um, uh, an acceptable uh, factor of time to get to a particular ship or to get to particular items within the game. I don't know if that's a good or bad thing, but um, I've deduced that that is what is going to be part of this new algorithm, uh, which also takes a little bit more of that kind of player driven mechanics away from the game, which is what they're, what they're steering towards. I'm not too happy about that, but I, this is what made me kind of happy because it might not be too bad if we're looking at what I saw here leaked to us. We can see this particular new screen that was leaked on Reddit and it looks as if it's almost like options or let me, let me enlarge this for you guys so you can see what's going on here. Um, excuse me, one moment here. Fits a screen. There we go. This is really cool, like a commodities market. And I think they'll do this on other types of particular items. But a commodities market with futures trading would be really interesting. I think we will be get uh, we will be able to get involved in it as a player, which is cool, along with the algorithm that they have within the game, so that the NPCs are consist uh, consistently calculating uh, the actual valuations based upon volume and that base factor of time that just uh, that Jake just showed us. And if this is the case, and this is how they're going to rule this out, this actually makes me a little bit more excited and a little less worried that the NPCs are going to kind of be taking control, because we're literally going to be inserted into this algorithm as a player. I hope that that's how they're going to plan it. I think that would be a nice kind of 50-50 uh, split for, you know, you know, hey guys, we're gonna have 90% controlled NPC economy, but we will allow you to participate 
in the futures market. We will allow you to participate in valuation. If they do that, if they do that, that would be kind of like a really nice compromise for player-driven mechanics within the game. And I think that that would, that would make most industrialists very happy to be involved in something like this. How much effect we will have is another conversation. But the actual mechanics of it, I'm not, I'm not uh, as worried if this is the way that it's going to roll out. And I can, I can kind of deduce, I almost deduce that this is how they're going to kind of satiate this uh, demand that the industrialist has for the player driven mechanics is to say, OK, you know, we are going to let you operate directly within the system, directly with this algorithm. If they do that, kudos to them. And I am much happier of a trader, of an entrepreneur within the game. But this is a really cool screen. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm not quite sure what the stuff behind me is actually trying to show there other than probably to the minute or to the day charts as far as like the options on them or, you know, I'm not quite sure how specific. I think the more in depth they get with this particular chart, the better it's going to be, the, the cooler the gameplay is going to be. And it will it will give us the industrialists that kind of gameplay that we are looking for it will give certain kind of. Um, valuation as far as like the actual tangible feel of this having some type of value of, of the cost being like important to us uh, if we are involved with this particular process. So I'm, I'm not quite sure, just, just kind of looking at what's being uh, released to everybody. And I would say this though, I would say all in all <clears throat> right now, I'm a, I'm a hesitant, I'm hesitantly optimistic so I hope you guys enjoyed this. I'll continue. I will always continue to look into the uh, any economic news within Star Citizen. I will always do that for you guys. I know that there are a lot of industrialists that follow this channel, and I'm not giving up on continuing to fight for player-driven mechanics because there are a lot of people out there that like to play the game this way, and I don't think it's smart to completely dismiss that because you will lose a lot of the population or citizens and you will you will make the game less successful in doing so. So this is what they have told us that they are listening to the community feedback from what Jake had told us on that last calling all devs. It kind of has a negative connotation sometimes. Like I know that people like to like to diss on designer, you know, spreadsheet designers that don't open the game. But you know the truth is that we do open the game, right? We do experience it. One of the problems with being an economy designer is that anything that I do in the economy is doomed to be anecdotal, right? I can't go in and say like, oh, well, how much is the cost of this material going over, you know, shipping from place A to place B? Well, if I did that, I'm not giving an accurate assessment of the system because I'm not playing in a server with, you know, hundreds of other people at the same time, right? Like, um, so it's something that we have to rely heavily on the community feedback to figure out, like how does how does our eco economy work? Um, how does it feel? Like what are players actually experiencing? Because there's a big difference between what we hope the players experience and what they actually end up experiencing, right? And the only way that we can figure that out is by listening to the forums, listening to player input, seeing what the like how the economy system is performing in the game. I think it's important that we continue to voice up as industrialists. I think we continue to keep them on point when it comes to what it is that we want, the industrialists. Don't let the people who are not industrialists over talk, look, talk right over you to, you know, because then your gameplay becomes invalid. So make sure you are continually pushing when you see that on forums that, oh, we don't want another Eve. When you know as an industrialist that you liked that particular play in Eve, that you actually support it, that you knew that market manipulation went only so far because competition actually made that price fair because you saw it, because you participated in it. So many people out there that don't realize that the EVE market was actually a very great example of a real life market and game because they did not participate in it are saying that it's not a great market, that it isn't, the, the, that it isn't good. It is very good presentation of how you take a market and introduce it into a game. So 
Let's just keep fighting for this. Uh, this is very positive news for the um, industrialists out there. So I will continue this um, coverage. Thank you for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this coverage. And I will see you on the next vid. Have a good day, guys.